Back in the day, a friend of mine's mother bought a Mercedes 300E. You know the one. Inline 3 liter 6 with a then rocket ship 177 horsepower. So to say that I am excited about an inline 6 taking up residence underneath the hood of a Mercedes again would be the understatement of the century. But here, the only thing in common is the displacement and the number of cylinders. Oh, and the configuration. From there, there's a turbocharger. That turns into 429 horsepower that comes in at 6,100 RPM. 384 pounds of torque comes in at 1,800 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 5,800 RPM. But here's where we have a huge departure. So nine-speed automatic, and that's the same transmission we've driven in pretty much every Mercedes over the past, what, three, four years. And then they slap on a starter generator motor that sits between the transmission and the engine. So it's kind of like a mild hybrid system in that it can't run 100% an electric, but the purpose of this system, which they call the EQ system, is to run, get this, an electric supercharger that adds an additional 21 horsepower and 184 pounds of torque. And the entire purpose is to provide instantaneous torque while the turbocharger is spooling up. That sounds like a spaceship compared to Barbara Walker's Mercedes. It's, uh, it's quicker than that 400 coupe we drove, but it's more um, Mach Schnell than it is AMG. Here's a great example of what I'm talking about. Come around this turn, I'm gonna dig down into second gear. Wow. There's nothing that replaces an inline six. The way in which it delivers, not so much just power, the way it delivers torque. Ah. Oh. What a difference. Why the hell was Mercedes waiting so long to put a six cylinder that's in line back into their cars? It transforms the E-Class. The four cylinder, I'm not that excited about. Between an E300 and a 530, you get the 530. The E400 was nice, but nothing special. This is special. Remember that E400 coupe we drove last year? Lovely car, especially in that green. But I recall something about being the nicest Cadillac Eldorado I've ever driven. And that was mainly because it was missing an important option, adjustable dampers. Not the case here, believe it is fitted as standard on E53 convertibles. Uh, but really there are two things that impact driving dynamics. Uh, the wheel and tire setup and then something else. Uh, these are fitted with 19s as standard. So in the front, uh, two 45, 40 R19s and in the back, two 7535R19s, but this one is kitted out to within an inch of its life. So in the front, two 4535R20s, and in the back, two 7530R20s. So a lot of rubber on a luxury coupe convertible with a funky engine. But more importantly, this convertible fairweather car is fitted with all-wheel drive, Formatic and Mercedes-Benz speak. But what's important to understand here is 100% of the torque can go to the rear wheels. It's not like that E63S wagon, Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, where you can literally cut off the front differential. This, it, it's all the computer doing it, but it's nice to know that at least at some point when the computer decides that you are worthy of it, you can get 100% of the torque in the back. Here's an unusual test. This is called Portuguese Ben, which is the bottom of PV. Talk about really bad road. Wow, disturbs the plane of motion of this thing. And this is where you understand why one would buy a Mercedes convertible over others, because th there's virtually no chassis flex in this thing, even though there's terrible pavement and the bibs and bobs of the road. Like, you shouldn't be driving it this quick. Please don't try this at home. But it shows the absolute stiffness of the chassis. Little local history here. The reason why this road is so challenged in the potholes and the elevation changes and we're almost gonna get run over by a deer. Uh, this is an earthquake zone. If you were to buy a house here, you can't get earthquake insurance because 
they'll flat out tell you, you're gonna lose your house at some point. We just don't know when. You and I need to dive underneath the hood again to better understand that mild hybrid system. You see, it is a 48 volt electrical system, but more importantly, it is the primary electrical system of this engine family from Mercedes, which started with the four cylinder diesels in Europe and now has upgraded to the inline six as we are getting in North America. But that in turn has an impact over here because it makes the 12 volt electrical system the backup electrical system, which in turn changes the architecture of the front of these engines. So if I were to pull up all this Tupperware here, you would see there's a lot missing. However you want to call it, an accessory drive, a serpentine belt, and anything that would be attached to those is gone. It's not there, which left this packaging opportunity and gave the Mercedes engineers the time to go and pill for a page out of the Porsche engineers playbook. Remember when we saw the Panamera, the V8 twin turbo engine naked, and we saw how those engineers brought the catalytic converters closer to the turbos in the V with the express purpose of bringing the temperature on the cats up faster, thus making the engine run more efficiently, increasing MPG as well as output. Well, instead of it being back there, they moved them in the front here, same purpose, closer to the turbocharger, more efficiency, all that kind of stuff. The only thing different here is this grew out of the engine family of a diesel engine, yet it's a turbo gas engine with a particulate filter. That's interesting. So does that mean you can run lower octane gas in it? So I have set up my home brew here of individual, which is the, the comfort on the engine, the throttle mapping, but everything else is full fat. But I've made it only work as a manual transmission. So let's come around this turn here and downshift. Oh, that actually sounds pretty good. Now, this is more uh, about the transmission we're using here. We've driven it before in many other Mercedes, and it is, I gotta tell you, for a torque converter automatic, I am thoroughly impressed. It's got nine widely spaced gears to improve the fuel economy, and usually transmissions, when they have over eight gears, they hunt and pack and they're terrible. Like, most of those FCA nine speeds, they're just awful. This, it always chooses the right gear, even when I'm not switching the gears. The car is not particularly pleased with me at this point because I left the roof up midstream. But there's a method to my madness in that I wanted to share some of the tactile feel here. And yeah, I've been guilty of being a bit of a fanboy with Mercedes and specifically with their tactile feel. Remember that S550 cab we had in here? That was otherworldly. But this being the E, it, it's not any less, just different in that this material, it's not suede, but it feels like suede. Let's call it Alcantara. Uh, and it's the length of the whole roof, even the headliner here. And that combined with the layers of fabric in the top, including what I think is the Cambria cloth, it's it's artwork. That's the only way to describe the roof on these things, is artwork. So clearly, I'm a big fan of the interior of these things, especially this design theme that started in the S-Classes, and the tactile feel, not just of that roof, but all over the car, and just look at it. The diamond-stitched interior, everything. Even the design of the vents is something that has pageantry to it. But I have to say it again, car play in a Mercedes, it's abysmal. It doesn't work. I don't care if it's top up, top down, in the city, day, night. The voice recognition just, it's maddening. You know what? I'm doing this all wrong. Instead of being a wonderful whiner, how about constructive criticism? This thank you for giving us Apple CarPlay in a very fancy interior, but the voice recognition is where this falls down. You simply cannot use it for sending texts. You can barely make phone calls because it doesn't recognize names out of your own address book. It, it needs work on the voice recognition. Maybe hire somebody from Apple, hire, I don't care, maybe hire someone from Amazon because they've really locked down the voice recognition on Alexa. I don't care who you gotta hire. Once you fix the voice recognition, you got something here. Right now, you don't.
Aufrecht, Mircha und Grossersbach. Forget what you think that term means. Directly translated from German, it's more along the lines of Mercedes with obscene amounts of horsepower. And when I say obscene, something like if you were to get your grandmother, mother, girlfriend, wife to understand the kind of horsepower in, I don't know, an E63S, they would think, where the hell did I go wrong with you? But over the past couple of years, Mercedes seems to be content slapping the AMG badge on pretty much any old pedestrian car, which I have been critical of. However, I found something that sort of supports the badge on the back of this car. Shelby? Sport Plus mode. It's more than Mach Schnell. It's that electrification that drives the electric supercharger while that turbocharger is spooling. It actually all works. That's, that's the crazy thing. I, I'm still not calling this thing an AMG. Still. You had best belt in for this because we have never played around the options game in our entire history of playing the options game where we have had whole numbers missing. Just entries that say TBA. However, you and I are professionals, so let's press on. 2019 Mercedes AMG E 53 Cabriolet, $80,350. To that, we add silver paint for $720. Yes, they call it iridium silver, but why are we paying 700 bucks for silver? Then we add the weave trim here, $600. Uh, then we add the carbon fiber trim. That's our first stop on TBA. So let's put a pin in that, come back to it. Uh, then we add the fancy steering wheel. Why is that optional in an AMG for $500? And of course, we have to have the design, you know, interior with the Napa leather and the diamond stitch, all that kind of stuff, $4,200. Then we add the 20 inch wheels. And it's good value at $750. Uh, and then they throw in the performance summer tires for free. Then we press on to the illuminated door sills, $350. Highly suggest that. And then probably my favorite option, the AMG performance exhaust system. Got to have this for $1,250. Exterior lighting package. Why is this optional at $800? I have no idea. Then they want me to spend $250 on a race application. Really? And then the active multi-contour seats with the massage functioning. This was probably what Dale Carnegie was talking about for $1,320. Then we add a warmth and comfort package. Why do we spend an extra $1,050? We already paid for some other kind of package like that. Well, anyway, it's something about the vent system. Then we move into the domain of why is this optional? Head-up display, $990. Then another comfort package, this one's called Energizing, something about the cabin air, that's $800. And now, this is where I get excited, the center console and black piano finish. Don't really love me some black piano, would really prefer wood, that's no charge, as is the blue soft top, looks lovely with our extra cost silver paint. Then soft closed doors, $550. Nice, but $550. And then the parking assistance package, $1,250. And then the driver's assistance package for $2,590. Last but not least, a destination and delivery of $995 brings us a total retail price of TBA. Now, you really think I'm gonna leave you hanging? That gets us, without the carbon fiber, to $99,000. $465. You know what? As a bonus question, how much would you pay for the carbon fiber? As we close out the day here at the Torrance Country Club, this top up thing, uh, it's not about understanding structural rigidity. We sorted that out in Portuguese Ben. It's really what you hear or rather what you don't hear. Let's put our foot into the engine a bit more. And yeah, it, it's convertible. You definitely hear the outside of it more than if it was a closed coupe. But it's to an art now, the way they do these roofs and the, the layers they put into these things. And it's not just Mercedes, it's Mercedes and Porsche, I would argue, are at the pinnacle of this. And this really, it, it is impressive to the point where you can almost say to yourself, why would you need the coupe? Think of it like an additional question. When you and I first set out of this exercise to look at a new car, 
that is simultaneously a convertible, all-wheel drive, a new engine, a Mercedes that potentially has been misbadged. I foolishly thought this would be about a first drive review. Turns out I was incredibly wrong. Really what this was, was a glimpse into a future. But what future is that? The future of the proper application of electrification in a sort of performance-oriented car. And there's no way to mince words here. Whatever they call this system, it works. It is in no way related to the horrible mild hybrid system that was in a Chevy Malibu or a, a Buick LaCrosse a couple of years back. This, with the instantaneous torque, while all the other power on tap is waiting to spool up, it works well around town, on the freeway, in the canyons, to the point where I'm kind of sad to see this thing go. Is it, is it worthy of the AMG badge? I would still say no, because I feel the AMG badge, I'm a purist, it should be reserved for horsepower and torque numbers that are just bonkers. This is not bonkers yet, and that's where we talk about the future. This can be tuned to anything we want. It, it could be tuned for more RPMs. It could be tuned for, for more power, more torque. It could be applied to an E63S wagon to make it more powerful than a Dodge Demon. You could eat them for lunch, but perhaps I'm exaggerating, but think about the possibilities here. So while we have to sadly say goodbye to this thing because I'm kind of sad to see it go, and it is going to magically turn into a CLS with, I believe, the same engine, we will come back to you with an episode on that. I am gonna leave you with a question of, uh, how would you like to see this system evolve? Not just in Mercedes, but in other cars, and most importantly, how much would you be willing to pay for it? Now, I, I already shared with you the actual real number of this car in the options game, so please be realistic of the numbers. But let me know what you wanna see, how much power you'd like out of it, what you'd like to do, and how much you'd be willing to pay, and oh, by the way, where do you currently live? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I'm going to say that uh, we're about to step on the plane and go to the Chicago Auto Show for like the ninth or tenth year in a row. Kind of excited to go. They're not a huge show, but some good stuff to share with you guys. Uh, I believe that myself, as well as Craig Cole, and I are going to do two live broadcasts from there. So make sure you tune in on February 7th and February 8th. Uh, that's when we're going to do our broadcast. So we'll see you then. Make sure you look up on Instagram and Twitter. We'll give you the whole times when you could tune in and where. Uh, until then, I say bish beta.